Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let That Sink In. My name is Tiffany Smith, and I am the Marketing and Communications Director here at PM and Associates. And I am joined by my co-host, Todd Morgan. How are you, Todd? Wonderful. How are you? I am doing great. And we are on episode 10. I cannot believe yeah, that, Todd. Nice. Episode 10. And we are welcoming Fister today. We are welcoming welcoming Shannon Irby with Fister, who is the National Builder Manager of New Construction. Uh, Shannon joined Fister Faucets in May of 2017 as a part of the multifamily team covering developer relationships across the Southeast. Since then, she has grown with the company and taken over the role of the National Account Manager for multifamily and single family production building. Shannon manages a sales team and works with the supply, finance, and marketing teams to align with her vertical needs. Prior to joining Fister, she worked for Ferguson in the showroom segment for 12 years in the Virginia and South Florida markets, and she resides in West Palm Beach, Florida with her husband and two children. Welcome, Shannon. Good morning. Thank you so much. Glad How are you doing morning. today? I'm doing great. Wonderful. West Palm Beach sounds nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's winter I did time emphasis there. on West Palm Beach. Wow. Yeah. I wish we were there. We're nice and toasty down here. I think the highs are going to be in the 80s today. So oh, nice. So we need to start doing <laughs> podcasts on location. That's what we yeah. I think so. learned yeah. from this conversation. Yeah. Inside <laughs> plumbing podcast. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I like that sounds that. fantastic. <laughs> yes. So Shannon, talk to me a little bit about how you joined Fister and your history there. Yeah. So um, as you kind of mentioned earlier in, in the biography, um, I started my career with Ferguson um, growing up in Virginia and Ferguson being headquartered in that Virginia market. Um, there was heavy, heavy recruiting coming out of college. Um, so I had kind of joined in with the plumbing industry. Surprise. I don't know that anybody goes, you know, goes through their college right. time right. and yeah. says like, hey, I'm going to get out of college and sell toilets. But right. Um, <laughs> I understand. You know, that yeah. Was, that was kind of where I ended up. <laughs> we can all, all relate. We could all relate to that. Yes. Right? Yeah. No, but, you know, it was, but not it's great. It's such a fantastic cool. industry. I know we love it. <laughs> uh, but I kind of fell in love with the design aspect. Um, I ended up, you know, going through their showroom track and was part of their management training program um, that I'm sure lots of people are familiar with. Um, ended up down in Florida and um, kind of continued on that design track through showroom. Um, and I had met up with, you know, lots of industry contacts and, and that sort of thing. And when I found out that um, a position was going to be available working with Fister and multifamily as opposed to showroom, it was really attractive. And I kind of got a great opportunity to um, kind of get into that, into that role and was working with people that I had worked with back in Virginia with Ferguson. So um, That's in, the, great. In, in the distant history. So it was kind of full circle to um, kind of join in with a really amazing group of people and get to kind of diversify what I had been doing um, with Fister. So um, That's great. That is. You got a lot of titles. Yeah. You got a great history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, it's funny you say that. So my uh, my my work with when I first joined Fister, I had I knew plumbing and I knew design type stuff, but I had no idea about the size of the multifamily industry as opposed to, you know, custom home. It was a totally mm -hmm. different segment for me. So I started just in the southeast. And as I stayed uh, with the company that that grew, the opportunity grew and grew and grew. And so I, I started with southeast and I said, I'm not going anywhere cold. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Smart. I, yes. That didn't work out well. Okay. I, <laughs> I was going to say, did that work? Further further right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until I finally, you know, took over national coverage for multifamily, and then we kind of saw the need of, hey, we need, we need a trade group that's that's involved in high volume, both multifamily and single family. So yeah, um, yeah. So a lot of titles have evolved over the years. Um, taking on things that I, you know, in the past, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not yeah. Do that, well, it just sounds like you have a great, uh, you know, broad, I, uh, you've been in almost every segment of Fister, it sounds right. like, you know, so that's yeah. good. That's great experience for you. Um, yeah. yeah I, I want to talk a little bit about the history of Fister. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when Fister came into the market, they were price Fister back in the day. And I kind of want to talk about where Fister is today versus the price Fister of yesterday. When price Fister came into the market, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'll let you tell the story here, Shannon, but yeah. 
I mean, when Price Fister entered the market, they basically were one of the very first into the retail segment, like uh, uh, the old HQ supplies when uh, this box store concept was relatively new. Fister, I believe, was Price Fister was one of the first ones in that space. And of course, for the plumbing trade at the time, that was a bit of a shocker. But really, in a way, you guys were a, you were actually ahead of your time, because if you look at the box store today, who's in there? Every yeah. brand that you see at a plumbing wholesale branch, right, or in a showroom is now populating the aisles at the home stores. So I mean, the way I see it is Price Fister was actually a bit ahead of their time in that concept of getting into the retail space. Now everybody has followed that. So what has Fister of today done to try to change the stigma, if you will, that some of the wholesalers and contractors still hold on to today. I mean, this yeah. goes back so long ago, Shannon, but yeah. it's amazing. The memories are long. So uh, curious what you guys are doing to, to kind of change that narrative. Yeah, no, you're right. And memories are long and things are passed on from generation to generation. So um, I think it's like, hey, I have to kind of go back because when when you first kind of get involved with Fister and you start um getting out into the, the markets and talking to different people, you see that there's a lot of misconception yeah. um, or just created history of what people think Fister is or was or, or that sort of thing. And, you know, probably some of that is just a lack of information available just to the public or a lack of us speaking out on, hey, here's, here's where, who we were and where we came from. So I was like, a lot of people don't realize that Fister is a really old company. It was, um, it was started in 1910. So, um, you know, we're over 100, 110 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and the original creators of Fister were um, Emil Price and William Fister. So the name Price Fister has actually nothing to do with Price. It's actually the last names of the two original founders. Um, and so that's where it kind of it, it originally started. And what they did is they were, we were, they were in California um, and, and it was the, they were trying to get water out to their crops. Mm -hmm. um, and so as opposed to like carrying a bucket or a watering can or something, they created basically the modern hose bib. Um, okay. And, and that's actually where Fisher came from. So um, it was called the garden faucet. Um, and so these two guys had the garden faucet and that brought out and it's a hose bib and it was like allowing them to water crops. And the whole company sort of evolved from there. So um, after that, kind of another significant point in history was they created the Make a Shower, um, mm -hmm. which if you go look it up, it was it brought showering inside. So prior wow, that's to that, everyone was huge. like taking a bath. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Right? You think like, hey, you don't even consider the fact that everyone was taking a bath. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they kind of, if you look it up, it, it looks like one of those old fashioned shower poles that you're used to with a head and, and arms on it. Um, and so that was kind of the original time where Fister evolved from this hose bib gardening company into a faucet manufacturer. Um, it kind of came indoors at that point, came into the bathroom space. Yeah. It came indoors and all of a sudden it's like, hey, we've created a bathroom company. So that's kind of the evolution. And if you follow that history all the way through, you see like lots of evolution of Fister into a design space. There was the crown jewel and all these um, really interesting 50s, 60s, 70s faucets that, you know, had acrylics and, or not acrylics, mm -hmm. I guess it was crystals, crystal handles, right. and <laughs> crazy mauves and pinks and blues and greens and all that stuff. That, was that sounds so, awesome. We need to bring those back. <laughs> <laughs> With the avocado. I am, I am all for that. Yes. <laughs> you know, avocado appliances. I was like, I'll have to give you some photos, some of these old photos, and you guys can kind of post some show. Notes Absolutely. Love to see that. those. Yes. On the crown jewels. Um, because it's it's it, it will probably bring some people back. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yes. 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 So when you get into when you were talking about getting into the retail space, so like that's where some things got really interesting with this, or you know, we're it's California based company. Um, they have a foundry in California. Um Actually, it was one of few foundries around the country. So one of the other things that they did was during the war times, um, the foundry actually was making grenades. Um, they pivoted wow. and made grenades for the war. So wow. you know, there were a lot That's of amazing. foundries around the country. And so the ones that were available, they needed help making, mm -hmm. making products. So um, they had actually done that. And you, know, you kind of look at, hey, this is a California-based company. 
and there was a lot of segmentation at the time. So you think like, you know, you've got mowing up in Ohio area and, and, you know, your Delta is in Indiana and, and mm -hmm. there's all the way out in Southern California. Um, so when we ended up going into the retail space, it was kind of an interesting decision by the head of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there were parts of it, right, that have brought where we are today, where people say, hey, that's a retail company and all that, some perception things about it. So there's probably, you know, you could make a list of pros and cons um, mm -hmm. of what was good or bad about the situation. But it was kind of an interesting decision because it actually turned Fisher into a national company. Right. Sure. Um, right. Yep. You know, right. So that's your revolutionary portion of it is, yeah. is that, I mean, to your point, like the home center wasn't as big of a thing at that time, Right. Um, but it, it, it evolved into one and now mm -hmm. it it's big. Um, but it also brought Fisher across the country. Um, yeah. And without that, I don't know that that would have happened. Um, so it's of, despite the fact that maybe it, you know, didn't give us the best perception, um, it did evolve us as a company. Yeah. yeah and, and that perception only really lived in the wholesale side. I mean, you guys made a great name in that retail side. And I think right. that, uh, you know, we work every day to change that perception. And I think most of your Fister reps do as well, because the story is a good one. I think it's a great story. Plus, you don't stick around for 110 years as a company without putting out good quality product, exactly. backing that product up with good service. And that's the side of Fister that we've had a lot of fun representing the company and telling that story. I, I, I'm not ashamed of the story. I, I like the story. Yeah. I think it's it's a fun one to tell, quite honestly. And again, I, I kind of bring it back to, you know, hey, look at everything today. These guys were actually quite ahead of their time and uh, made a bold move early on when uh, when the concept was new. And, and as you mentioned, it, it gave you guys a national name brand recognition, which ultimately is not a bad thing. But uh, yeah. we've sure been impressed with the with the uh, the quality and the service of the product. So, yes, I was like, there's a lot of people. It, it, it's an interesting story, I think. Um, and I think it gets simplified into, you know, I hear a lot of things like, oh, they're owned by Home Depot or they're owned by this company or this. And in reality, it's just, hey, we're not. We're we're Fister, Price Fister. We're right. the same company we were a long time ago. And our history is kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It's different. And it's I, I like to tell the story so that people kind of understand who we are as a company. And I think to your point, we have a lot of really wonderful people um, that work for the company and kind of make up what it, you know, what it was, but what it is today. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and speaking to that, I mean, let's let, talk about, you know, Fister faucets today. And, and it, you know, obviously, we've established the fact that we belong right there in the wholesale market, right along with the other competition, the other name brands that you're familiar with, that you also see at the home centers. So we are not only retail, we are a wholesale plumbing line, we are a wholesale faucet line. And, uh, and a complete line at that. So, which also makes us great for multifamily, correct? I mean, we can tie together the kitchen, we can complete a bathroom suite. And, uh, you know, one of the advantages I have found in the time we've represented Fister, not only for the multifamily segment, but also for the homeowner, for the single family home homeowner, is the fact that your trims still fit these valves that have been in the wall for 15 plus years. I, I just had a project, they, uh, they 15 years old and they ordered all new trims for the valves. The, the building owner was shocked. He thought he was going to be ripping the walls out, having to put all new valves in and things like that to make this update. Right. Because his yeah. his his bathrooms had become dated, wanted to update the trims. And we were able to do that for him. He was thrilled. The building owner was thrilled and also shocked. And I also went out to another uh, homeowners about 18 year valve in the wall they had the same idea. They figured they were going to be replacing the entire uh, valve. They had an older gold and they wanted to update. And we went out, we took a look at it and we determined that we could just pick out some new trims and they were just thrilled to death. So the, to me, that's a huge advantage. Also coming back to the quality piece, right? These are 15 year old, um, you know, multifamily or, or hotel in this case, I believe it was a hotel, the, the, the valves that we just did, the trims, hey, those are 15-year-old valves that are still in the wall that are still working today. And so I hear stories like this, and I, I think in the multifamily and the single-family homeowner, one of the advantages is to have uh, Fister in the wall, 
You can make those changes and those updates, but you also have a great quality product in the wall. So you know, aside from this, what has also made Fister successful in the multifamily segment per se? Yeah. So let me go back and address some of that really quick. I mean, yeah. it, you know, I think there's some, there's some perception too that we were when we became when we went to retail that we became a retail company. Um, and to your point, like we never actually became a retail company or a retail manufacturer. We we've always diversified. So we've mm -hmm. had you know both segments of this business. We've always had a a retail segment that produces product into retail um, and a wholesale <clears throat> company that and segmentation that releases this product into the wholesale portion of things. And, you know, those products are built based on the needs of the consumer and the needs of the, you know, the end user and those sort of things. So when you talk about um, the, the valving, I, you know, I think that's really important. We've, we've always had our own um, design. We have an entire industrial design um, team out in California. Um, we still have, we have all of our 3D printing materials. We have a design laboratory. We have a testing facility. Um, all these things out there where we're creating product. And so, one of the things that allows us to do is create consistency in our product. So, when you talk about the valving, um, basically the cartridge that we use now, I think we're on um, the fifth or sixth version of that cartridge at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and you have to go pretty far back, uh, over 20 years back now to get to the previous version. So it's That's incredible. Wow. Been quite a while. Um, and the nice thing is we've been able to keep consistency. So when you go out to that hotel project you're talking about and you say, hey, the brass is still in the wall, the brass is still good. We have a cartridge that we could use if we want, but you could actually pull that cartridge out and pop in the brand newest, most latest one that we just launched that has the highest flow rate and the best torque and all the best improvements, pop that into the existing brass in the wall and then use any one of the trims in our entire line from the least expensive entry level trim all the way up to the fanciest brush. I love that. That's great. That's fantastic, so, yeah. Um, I so love yeah, that. So having that has given us the ability to keep consistency within our product and yeah. offer that to our consumer. And, uh, and Speaking to the multifamily, um, I've represented other faucet companies and we've had some wins in the multifamily segment. And in the past with certain manufacturers, the part side of it has been a nightmare. So, you mm -hmm. you know, you get this project, you get the stuff right. in the wall. And next thing you know, you're living <laughs> with the maintenance guy who's not happy because you're taking forever to get parts. They've got rooms down. That has not been the case with Fister. And I want to I want to drive that home to anybody that's watching. Let that sink in and watching this who is uh, project based in any way. Fister is a great, great product for that multifamily space. And and uh, yeah, I, I just I've been so impressed with with uh, not only the, the, the quality of it, but also the looks as well. So uh, just anybody who's in the multifamily segment, like, you really need to keep Fister in mind. Yeah, totally. I was like, parts, parts. is always like everyone's stress point. Everyone's like, oh my God, I need yep. parts. Like, parts. how am I going to get parts? Um, yeah, you're right. And and I think like some of it may come from, you know, um, uh, breadth or depth of, of distribution. And so sometimes there's some um, like fear points for people, right? Because mm -hmm. parts is just such a stressful portion of replacement and that sort of thing. Um, and I, so I think that's great. I think it's a good message. Um, we do have widespread distribution. Um, our customer service team is amazing and I they think are. They do a great job. Um, our warranty is really robust um, mm -hmm. on things. So um, it's not a stressful, I feel like it's not a stressful experience. Um, and that's more what I convey to people when I'm talking to them about parts. I'm, I'm, I say, hey, you know, Fister is not going to create a stressful environment for you. So if you're calling into our customer service team and you need a replacement part or even a new faucet or a new um, segment of whatever you're doing, like they're, they're, the team's going to support you and help you. And um, I think a lot of the reviews you see about us is for people who've actually gone through the experience, see that, hey, it's actually really simple and easy and low stress. Um, and that's from both our customer service department in-house, but also like just our sales team in general. Um, 
you know, we've always been uh, really responsive. I, I laugh. I'm actually, you know, I'm a national sales manager and I've got this team and whatever. And I have maintenance people from individual properties that will email me like, Hey, I need seven spray heads. Can you get yeah. that? For me? <laughs> so I was like, we're just, I was like my group. So is just great. Like, yeah. Like lovers of supporting our customers yeah. and providing, and it's just a very low stress thing. So, um, yeah, I think that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I was like, I feel like the stress level with parts mm-hmm. that always is a catalyst. Like it's a, it's just a trigger for people. Sure. And I want to convey them, Hey, it's, we're going to make this low stress. I promise. Um, you don't have yeah, to ease, ease of doing employees. business. I, I always bring it back to ease of doing business. And those are always my yeah. favorite companies to represent and to work with. And even as a consumer, of course, to purchase from as well, right? Somebody yeah. who makes the experience easy and then takes that stress out. And like I said, speaking from experience and not being able to get those parts or having the manufacturer be really tough to get that part from. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. they have it, but they're just playing hardball with it. Uh, not been the experience with Fister. So again, anybody who's in that multifamily segment do keep Fister in mind because you might only be looking for that one year, right? A lot of contractors, they got to get that year, get past that year. And then of course the warranties then fall to the business owner and the homeowner or the the person renting that space. If you own the building, you own the business and you've got Fister in the wall, you're going to have the support that you need. And you can knock that stress one off your list and move on to something else that's stressing you because they have just been so wonderful to work with, especially as it pertains to parts. And I haven't needed a lot of parts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Course, There's a... <laughs> we don't want and on that note, I haven't needed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's That's a it's great. a testament to Fister. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. And and multifamily is a big segment for us. I mean, you were kind of ta- alluding to it earlier. Um, we kind of pivoted into that space um, back post 2008 housing mm-hmm. declines, um, and you know. There was a there was a lot of and you guys probably remember back to this. There was a lot of dynamics with the changing of single family builder with, um, you know, larger companies were buying up smaller companies. Mm-hmm. And so the dynamics were very quickly changing with the single family industry. And there was such a huge need, a massive need for housing then and still. I mean, you can you know, everybody reads articles now, but you see the, the huge, massive need for housing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of pivoted into that space and we actually found a really like nice niche and nice home mm-hmm. for Fister there. Um, we do a really good job of um, offering a product that fits the space, offering um, a price point that is what people are looking for, mm-hmm. delivering the design intent of what you know plumbers and developers and, and everybody's designers are looking for. Um, and then executing on it with our supply chain programs. Um, so I, it's it's kind of evolved over time, but but that's been a really good space for Fister. And mm-hmm. if you're kind of in the multifamily industry and you haven't worked with us, um, I think we're a great company to call. I, I think we're someone who would be a great resource in that space. Um, totally agree. Yeah. We shine in that space. Yes, yes, very, very shine. And then, you know, we've, we've kind of shined always, but this is like a good way to think of Fister is we're offering great design in various segments of the market, mm-hmm. at, you know, at a price point that people can afford. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're kind of that, you know, if you, if you come out of home center and you go into wholesale where you're, where you're kind of living in the wholesale space, and maybe you can't afford the highest end products, but you really have a design intent you're looking for, that's a really good space where Fister fits across channels. So whether mm-hmm. it's multifamily or single family production or showroom, that our goal is to deliver a product that hits all that design expectation of what you want that's cool and trendy, but we're going to give it to you a little better price point that's a little more affordable. With great service. With great service. Great service. And it's really <laughs> part. So like, let's, it's the full package. That's awesome. <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit here. And, you know, Shannon, being in marketing, um, one of the things that absolutely just shines about Fister is your docuseries, uh, American Plumber mm-hmm. Stories. Um, you really support the plumbing uh, trade, unlike any other company. And for those that don't know, I don't know how you don't know, but it's a, a series that introduces us, introduces us to plumbers across the nation as they share how they got started in the trade and their passion for the profession. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about why this kind of education is so important? 
So it's really interesting how this whole thing has evolved for us. And I think like one of the things that is a, you know, one of the things we've just been sitting here talking about is that, you know, Fisher hasn't done the best job, like I'm going to take accountability here of marketing and talking about who we are yeah. and where we are in the space and just having a voice, having a voice. And obviously when you don't have a voice, people fill that void, right? Their own mm-hmm. voice, right? right. So their own opinions um, and their own, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> assumptions. Yes. It's natural. We all do that. And we do that, you know, obviously not just in faucets, we do it across our lives, but, um, you know, so, uh, it was interesting when, when kind of, we went into this COVID era and yeah. everybody, you know, things slowed down for a minute. Um, while everyone was kind of figuring out what the heck was going on. Right. Um, we kind of, we kind of all grounded ourselves and, and kind of came home and started having a lot of conversations about who we are as a brand and, you know, talking to the public about ourselves. But then we started talking about, man, we have some amazing customers, yeah, mm-hmm. some amazing customers that have amazing stories and yeah. that never get told, <laughs> that never get told, that no that one never gets told about. And yeah. I was like, these stories are fun. They're entertaining. They're inspirational. Yeah, um, they speak to a positivity, and I think you know. Yes, they do. Right. I was like, I think that's a key component. It's like any. I mean, I bet I'm not alone here, but I've almost like completely stopped watching the news because I was <laughs> right. like, I just it feels sad. Yeah. To me. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was like, this. One of the things I love about this is that it brings positivity in a space that hasn't media hasn't had as much positivity as you might like. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of started it. It was the idea was, hey, we just want to tell these like cool, fun, inspirational stories. Um, and how can we do that? And yeah. So that's where the story, the series started to grow from. Um, and then when we really got into the meat of it, we realized what a, what a, like how massively important this was in right. saying like, Hey, part of this is there's just, you know, there's an aging population within right. the mm-hmm. trade and with all trade professions. There's not as many y- young people coming into the no, trade. Right. <clears throat> yep. And it's just, we're, we're, we've kind of pushed kids into college, um, right. which isn't a bad thing, but it yeah. kind of has left this, the segment of youth that maybe doesn't realize that what a great career this is. is. Yeah. yeah. That this yeah. is mm-hmm. an option for them. Yeah. Um, an option it, that lets them come out of school, not saddled with debt and things like that as well. Absolutely. And an immediate earning potential, right? Immediate absolutely. earning potential. Yeah. So. And, and just that, Hey, maybe if, if, I, I feel like it got to a point where it was like, hey, we got to go to college or we got to go to the military. Right. Which, right. Those options are those great, are your options. But, <laughs> yeah. but there's, yeah, right. there's more, right? There is there's yeah. something more. in the middle or something different. And if you maybe because that like doesn't you fit everyone. Fit. Those those two options don't fit no, everyone. Yeah. They don't. It, it feels very like polarizing, like you have this or this, as opposed right. to saying, hey, there's all kinds of options. Like if you were looking at your life and saying, like, do I don't, I don't necessarily want a desk profession. I you know, I really like being outdoors or I like working with my hands and doing that. And, yeah. you know, a lot of this is uncovered. Shop classes have gone away. And, you know, if we look at education systems and that sort of thing, it's just, you know, in, ev- in the evolution, like we've lost some of that. Right. Um, so this kind and of it shines a light on, like I said, what a great career it is and also how important of a career that it is for everyone. You know, I mean, yeah. and then it won't was- go away. Right. There's a new- right. Right. And- um, in this segment for forever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's not, there's not going to be a point where people don't need running water. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Plumbing, electrical, all those types of trades. There's going to be a need for it, uh, for laborers and the trades yeah. are a, a wonderful option for young people. Uh, and not just young people, you can start a career in plumbing at any age, really. I mean, if you need to just make a wholesale change at age 40 or 45, yeah. You can you can get the education needed and join the trade. But uh, I just think the American plumber story, not only I love the message, love the message. I, I think we need to continue to push that message and try to attract people into the trades. But for anybody who's not watched American plumber stories, this isn't a I'm trying to use the correct word here. It's not it's not half ass done, if you will. It's <laughs> no. quality. I oh, mean, I was quality. so impressed yes. with, you know, the drone footage, the yeah. aerial footage they're doing. This is I, a true... I aspire. I aspire as a marketer. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, without a doubt. I mean, watching Absolutely it, this beautiful. is this is yeah. something you would be seeing on Discovery or yeah. you know things like that. It's that quality of a show because it is a show. It, and it absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah they hired an amazing production company. Oh, they were outstanding. Yeah, yes, they're they are amazing. They've done an incredible job. Um, you know, our if if, uh, if people are not familiar, Spencer Brown is our director of sales mm-hmm. um, for Fister and you know, a lot of this was his vision and what this looked like. And so he's been, he's done a great job of working with this production company to execute a vision of what we wanted to show of these people. And this production company has just exceeded everyone's expectations. Yeah, they definitely brought it to life. Absolutely. How amazing. And it's funny to watch, you know, if you go, if you go back, we're on the third season now. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the first season and second, you'll see like an evolution of how this has grown and the vision and, you know, the cinematic quality of everything has kind of evolved with us on what we've conveyed. And, you know, the, the idea was to, um, educate inspire entertain and inspire and we've kind mm-hmm. of done those three things absolutely season, yes um, and kind of convey that message and the production has really helped with that and Shannon Without where can everyone go to watch American Plumber Stories if they yeah, haven't seen it yet so the easiest way to find it is go to American Plumber Perfect. Um, that's <laughs> our website so if you go there so easy it has all three seasons, um, the third season where we just released the fifth, fifth episode two days ago, actually. Nice. So you Great. Can go and check out the misfits, um, there and it allows you to learn more about Fister. You can, um, we actually have some shirts and hats and all kinds of merchandise that you can purchase from there. If you want to kind of display that really cool logo. We yeah. Have. What are, what are you displaying back there, Todd? Bucket. Yeah. I've got the, uh, oh, the bucket. Yeah. The bucket. <laughs> Yeah, but that I love that logo. The bucket. Oh, um, it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the coolest plumbing logos I've ever Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. Yes. I, yeah. Even we got some hats and even my 10-year-old son was like, yeah, that's pretty that's cool. cool. That's cool. I know. Cool. I wear my t-shirt all the time just because like I said, <laughs> yeah. I think that that logo is just so cool and being in the plumbing trade. So if you can't I mean, tell, I'm Shan, we're, we're like number one fans of it. So yeah. yes. <laughs> It's a great way to represent, you know, what you do and your trade in a subtle mm-hmm. way that's absolutely not in your face. And, you know, it's, it's supporting who you are and you, and what you're proud of and, and the hard work yep. you put in, you know, everyone absolutely. in that profession has put in a ton of hard work. And um, it, I feel like it represents like that culture and that feeling. And that's for great. anybody in St. Louis, we're based out of St. Louis here. I am, uh, but there are uh, St. Louis plumbers featured on American Plumber Stories. Yeah. So um, I don't yeah. know exactly which season that was in, but uh, for if you're checking it out for the first time, look for the look for the St. Louis plumbers. You might see somebody you know. Yes, yes, you might see him. He's, I want to say he was two, but watch me mess that up here. Um, <laughs> That's all right. We won't quiz right. you. They, We're like, okay, they can Shannon, go through all name the episodes them, to season find one, him. episode one, go. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I'm saying, you'll see the arch, so that'll give it away. Yeah, perfect. And there you, you go. Do it. <laughs> Yes. It was a great episode. Yeah, it was. Yes. And there's been some really, uh, you know, I'll say that there's been some where I've been really choked up and. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. they have That's so the much passion for their job and their career, which is just yes. so incredible to see. So. And yeah. you see the human side too. Absolutely. Which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we want to share this with, with everyone. We want to share it with, you know, young people, with older people. Um, mm-hmm. I, we actually just reached six, mil- six million total views. So. Oh, nice. wow. Congrats. Congratulations. Yeah. We're shooting for that for this podcast. That's right. right. <laughs> we're ju- we're almost it. there. Almost. We're, a little just way a we're still million. working on it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, also, I recently worked with uh, Matt Kroger, um, who is in charge of all of our showrooms, and I worked with him on some social, 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 social media <laughs> posts. I got it. <laughs> I made a little more coffee this morning, mm-hmm. uh, featuring uh, the new Fister showrooms, um, and the displays turned out absolutely beautiful. Awesome. Um, so I would love for you to give us a quick overview of the product mix available uh, from Fister for kitchen and bath, if you can. Yes. So um, we've had a lot of, I I think a lot of evolution over the last several years, kind of um, lending into this more contemporary vibe. Um, 
and our new displays are gorgeous. Um, if you haven't seen them, they have you know kind of a temporary clean industrial white black. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. vibe we have them. several posts featuring them on our LinkedIn, so everyone can go there and, and check out all the feast, uh, the Fister uh, displays. They're absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Matt yeah. and I built one uh, a few weeks back, actually just before the holidays, and it was an eight foot, and it is impressive. It yeah. was uh, the lighting on it's outstanding, and yeah. the product looked beautiful. Yes, great, great lighting on this one. So we've had a few generations, um, but this one looks really sharp. Um, it's a mix of uh, modern and traditional. Um, we extended the finishes out beyond what you would normally find in multifamily offerings. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited to see how the design community embraces yeah. um, this new collection. Um, and we kind of, it was inspired by like a steampunk. Um, oh, that's yeah. so cool. That's awesome. So, um, and is it that on your website icky. as well, that new collection? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we actually just added it to the website and um, it will be featured at KBiz and we'll awesome. have a video to go with it. So lots of exciting, um, exciting new things coming, uh, both that just launched. And then we have some new things coming next year that will be a surprise. That's awesome. That's and, and Shannon, you mentioned uh, uh, KBiz a couple of times. Do you know off the top of your head what the date is for KBiz? Just for anybody who's uh, watching the podcast. Yes. So we will, we will be there at, K at KBiz. Um, IBS will be in the KBiz hall. Um, the dates for the um, show are January 31st through February 2nd um, okay, in Las Vegas. So um, if you need an excuse to go to Las Vegas. Yeah, no kidding. Always. There's a good one. <laughs> Just saying. That's right. Um, and our booth is N2919. Um, N2919. So okay. And we'll be with our sister company, Quickset. So um, we actually share a booth with them and it's a great way to kind of match up your hardware. Great. That's great. Awesome. Well, make sure you stop by and say hello to Shannon Irby if you are at KBiz this year in yeah. Las Vegas. Absolutely. Looking, looking forward to meeting everyone. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Shannon. This has been such a fantastic conversation and we have loved having you on Let That Sink In. Thanks. Yeah, this so has much. been great. It was an honor. I really appreciate you guys allowing us to kind of come and talk about our, our story and, and our company here. So thank you for that. Absolutely. We love working with Fister um, and really excited about our partnership in 2023. Absolutely. Reach out to uh, PM and Associates, your salesperson, uh, or email us or give us a call if you'd like more information on Fister and what we can do for you both uh, for single family home and for multifamily as well. Absolutely. You can call us at 317-827-0419. And as always, you can contact us through our website at p-massoc.com. All right, guys, Perfect. have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Take care, Shannon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.